Welcome back to the outlet. Um, Susan, church marriage is, is it a matter of just walking into church and the in a white dress or are there other requirements before now to say this is a legal church marriage? Wow, thank you so much, uh, Madam Rebecca, for that question. Because we've experienced a lot of issues with most marriages that are celebrated in churches. They come to court and they are petitioning for divorce. You ask where did you celebrate your marriage and before you know it, they're giving you a certificate from some church that is not gazetted and licensed to do what? To wed. Mm. So this is very important, especially to the public. Yes. It is very important for you to do your due diligence, carry out some research about this church that you want to celebrate your wedding in. These days you can go to the URSB website yes. and just put in churches gazetted to marry right. in Uganda. And they will give you a long list of all these churches. So find out whether the church you want to marry in is actually licensed to marry. Yes. For that church marriage to do what? To be valid. To be valid. Otherwise, you'd be wasting money, you'd be wasting resources mm. to carry out that marriage. So one of the requirements for a church marriage is that the place you want to wed in must be licensed to wed you. Yes. Even the minister that is going to preside over your, that is going to officiate the marriage, should be a recognized minister, must be having a license to wed you as a couple. Oh, so not every pastor is licensed? Not exactly. Okay. Not every pastor, not every man or woman of God yes. can actually do what? Can wed you. Yes. There must be recognized what? Ministers okay. within a given denomination mm. that are licensed to wed people. Yes. And then the other aspect is, it goes back, like I said, church marriages are also regulated by the Marriage Act. Yes. You need to get the other preliminaries we talked about. 15 yes. days, get the certificate from yes. the registrar. Yes. And then there are these marriage bans that are read. Oh, yes, in church. Exactly. Mm. Before the date of the celebration. Yes. That is very important because we want to know whether the public got to know, got an opportunity to know. You guys did not get married by ambush yes. or so quickly. It is important. So those are the basics for a church marriage. Look at the place of worship. It must be gazetted or licensed to wed. The minister that is presiding over or officiating that marriage must be a recognized minister within that denomination yes. to wed you. Not every man of God, not every woman of God, or woman of God can do what? Can wed you. Those are very, very important. In yes. a church marriage, in a church setting at least. Yes. Susan, um, Kindly tell us about Muslim uh, marriages. How do they work? What makes them legal? Okay, now with Islamic marriages, they go back to the law that also governs them. The marriage and divorce of the Mohammedan what? Act. But the prerequisites of any Islamic marriage are one that should be more of an offer and acceptance, a oh, yes. proposal from the man and an acceptance from the woman. Yes. Usually they have another third party called the vikil, the, the guardian of the woman. Mm. Muslims generally believe that women are of the weaker sex. So they will always want also that consent of the nikil, the guardian on behalf of the what? Of the, of the bride to be. That is the first requirement for any Islamic marriage. There should be a proposal and there should be acceptance on the other side, and both these two take place in one meeting, not in separate meetings. Mm. Number two, the persons getting married to each other should be of sound mind. Yes. It gets back to the basics again. Should be of sound mind. Whereas uh, Islam Muslims have lower ages below 18 for marriage, for boys and girls, the constitution is the grand norm. 18 is 18 for both of them. Mm. So the age factor, the issue of the parties being of sound mind, mm. the ceremony for Muslims, they call it a, a nikil, mm. a nikah ceremony, nikah. exactly. They call it a nikah ceremony, and once those requirements are fulfilled, then there's what they call mahar, it, it, it's dowry, but this is paid to the girl, okay. not the parents of the what? Of oh. the girl. The, the lady is the one that receives this? Exactly. Oh, how nice. <laughs> so it's not given to the parents. For, for, for an Islamic marriage to do what? 
to stand. The man yeah. must give the lady right. that money or property. It could be money, it could be a house, it could be a car. They give it to the woman. There's nothing about parents there with Islamic marriages. So once these three or four elements are fulfilled, a ceremony is held and the two enter into a marriage. And it the is celebrant has to be it could be they, they call them sheikhs, it could be an imam, those Islamic leaders. So can any imam or sheikh um any leader in the Islamic faith. Islamic faith conduct a marriage? Yes, they can. No restrictions as to whether you are registered or anything like that? No, for Islamic marriages, no. Okay, mm. that's clear. Then maybe the aspect of witnesses. Yes. They also require witnesses, at least two. Okay. There can be, they, it can be two males or one male and two females okay. to be present during the what? The ceremony. Yes. Mm. Okay. Um, Susan, there are some people that come together as mm -hmm. friends, then they live together, have children, acquire property together. So the society sees them as married. Mm. Are they married? All right, about uh, cohabitation, it's very unfortunate to say that it does not matter how long you've been together with somebody, it does not matter how many kids you have, or how many properties you've been able to amass together as long as you've not gone through any of the marriages that we've, be, we've discussed today, you're not married. The advice I usually give to people that are cohabiting is usually to have uh, your clear relationship. Like if you have property, it should either be in your names or in both your names so that it reflects since you do not have the cover or the protection marriage. that married people have. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, then there are some things called prenuptial agreements, yeah? Agreements that uh, people uh, write before entering into a marriage. Uh, are they applicable in Uganda? And if they are, how uh, can one use those? Well, prenups are very common in the Western world. In Uganda, I will say they are applicable although people are yet to understand. They are not having any particular legislation or a law that talks about prenuptial agreements, but we can envisage them under Section 27 of the Divorce Act, mm -hmm. which talks about upon dissolution of marriage, courts usually inquire into whether parties have any agreements regarding, right. yes, regarding how they would wish their properties to do what? to be divided upon the dissolution of the marriage. Mm. So yes, they are applicable and they are safer because briefly what you do in such agreements is you tell each other, we are getting into this marriage, but property X is mine, property X is yours. Now, Susan, these prenups, these prenuptial agreements, uh, what are the importances of them? Well, the uh, prenups help couples not to overexpose dirty linen in court, mm. especially in terms of, you know, this is mine, that is mine. Yes. It gives couples an opportunity to decide what they want to own individually and what they want to own jointly. Yes. So that in the event of divorce, yes. the work of court is simplified. Oh. Because both of you know what you own individually and what you own separately. So that is the real advantage of having Peanuts. Susan, it's been a pleasure hosting you and we've learned so much from you. Sharing your knowledge is um, something that is immeasurable, so we thank you so much. Um, do you have any parting shots for our viewers? Yes, thank you so much yes. once again, Euro Media, mm. for having me. Uh, my parting shots to all the viewers out there is that uh, if your relationship counts, if it does count, please have a way of formalizing it in, through any of the, the types of marriages that we've discussed today. And also embrace prenups because they help you, they also help court. Just in the event your marriage goes bad, you make work very easy. At the end of the day, we want you to access justice and for you to do that, you have to be vigilant.
and take care in each and every step that you go through. Thank you so much. I hope to be hosted next. Thank you. So there you have it. If you want to secure your marriage and if you want to prove that your marriage is legal and in accordance to the laws of Uganda, you must make sure that it was acquired using the steps that we've discussed in this very episode. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us at Juro Media on our so various social media platforms and our phone contacts that is on your screen. Thank you for joining us and I'm Rebecca. <laughs>